Good morning, everybody. My name is Graham Woods from Exagrid Systems. I'm responsible for systems engineering within this particular region. So I'm going to spend some time this morning running through where we see the market being today. And then towards the end of the presentation, I will just speak a little bit about our technology. So I've learned some lessons this morning, particularly for Martin. Being a vendor, I shall not lie. <laughs> we'll start with that one. <laughs> and an interesting anecdote, I spent three hours on a plane yesterday. Right at the back of the plane, I got on the plane talking to a colleague and I mentioned the word of a backup application vendor. And the guy sat next to me and said, are you going to Tech Unplugged tomorrow? And I said yes, and turned out it was Martin. So the guy that talks about vendors was sat next to a vendor for three hours, unfortunately, yesterday <laughs> afternoon on a plane that got delayed um, quite considerably from London. So um, it was interesting to, to, to listen. So I, I want to start by just outlining, and it actually touches on some of the points Martin mentioned, that there are questions that should be asked when you define a project and when you go out looking for a new solution there are questions that should be asked and, and certainly right up front a project definition that defines requirements and one thing that we've seen is there are situations where people are becoming much smarter around defining what they want to achieve from a solution that they're looking to acquire or to purchase these are they're not rocket science they're not complicated they're fairly common um, if you look at what, what we've listed, people want to be able to have a solution for data protection that, if it's just a hardware-only solution, supports the existing software platform. Uh, it's easy to use. At the end of the day, if it's a hardware platform, it has to be set and forget. It has to provide the fastest backups, the fastest restores, the best scalability, but also give the ability to survive technology obsolescence, not have to incur forklift upgrades within a three- or five-year cycle of the technology. So these are the sorts of requirements I'd encourage everybody to define and ask the vendors that you talk to how they address each of those requirements, particularly today as the market's evolved, particularly at the software layer. If you take a look at Veeam as an example you've already heard from today, they've pushed the technology from just being able to use disk to really going down a deduplication route. But a deduplication route has some negative effects on things like instant VM recovery. The two, in some cases, are mutually exclusive. So one of the things I'll talk about is how we solve that problem of not being able to recover quickly if you try and mo make the most effective use of data reduction. So I'd encourage you, as I say, to look at um, all the vendors you speak to, pose some questions. How do I get the fastest backups? How do I get the fastest restores? Um, and it's ob obvious or evident to most people out there that the shift from Tape to disk has started happening quite some time ago. People have started using disk for some years, primarily disk staging initially, to get the data to a, another medium that's not the primary storage in the quickest way possible. Tape doesn't do that anymore. Tape's there for long-term archival storage. So why disk? Faster backups, um, the ability to add reliability, and less management time. You don't end up with many, many tapes, tens, hundreds, thousands of tapes in, in cold storage, um, just sitting there waiting for recovery purposes. Um, the ability to use disk and then lessen the recovery from tape is quite considerable. But as soon as an organization gets to acknowledgement that they are going to use disk for backup purposes, the next logical decision-making process says, well, if I'm going to use disk, surely I have to use deduplication. Because if you look at the redundancy that exists in backup data, um, data that you're protecting for retention purposes, that redundancy is significant. Most organizations are doing at least a weekly full backup, some monthly active full backup, some do synthetic full backup, uh, backups, admittedly. But the storage required to keep that data is considerable, unless you use a, a feature, a function, um, a technology which is deduplication, the ability to only store the changes from backup to backup to backup. But if you look at many situations, the way in which a deduplication solution is implemented can significantly affect whether a, an organization can meet the requirements that I talked about on the opening slide around, around backup and data protection. If you don't put a deduplication solution in place that puts those performance characteristics and restore characteristics in mind, you can easily end up in a situation where backups slow down versus straight disk, restores take longer, instant VM recoveries I've seen personally take many hours where rehydration is required. And these are the sorts of things that we wanted to design a solution that could avoid. Um, certainly around the, the performance characteristics and also scalability. So there are a few situations where, as an organization, you could implement a deduplication um, technology or a deduplication um, product. And in many ways, the market has also evolved that there's a clear fit for the different types of technologies. And I'll quite open and honestly explain where we think each of those fits are. Um, if you've got any kind of um, different ways of thinking, I'd be happy to take any questions as we go through, through the relevant section here. 
But really, there's, there's three ways or three places where deduplication can be implemented in the mid-market type organization today. You can do deduplication at a client where the actual client that organizations are, are deploying can do deduplication at that point and send deduplicated data over to a backup media server and then protect it to disk. Now, as I speak to organizations, speak to the backup people, they don't want that load being put on their, on their clients unless it's at a remote site, no IT, and they just want to get the data in a very one efficient way over to a central data center that does have IT experience. So I don't necessarily see client-side deduplication fitting in a mid-market organization with many, many clients out there. Where you tend to find the, the shift will occur is either to the server, effectively software-based deduplication, or an underlying hardware appliance, um, a target-based deduplication. And there are some interesting comparisons that you can make between software and hardware-based deduplication. The really easy thing for an organization to do if they have a a product that does software-based deduplication is to tick a box and say, I'm going to deduplicate in software. It's a really easy decision to make. Sometimes it can be perceived to be the lowest cost way of doing things um, because you've already got the software in place. But the one thing that is, is somewhat um, unknown in, in many ways is whenever or wherever you do de deduplication, it's a compute-intensive process. So if you take a situation where you're taking a general purpose server running an operating system such as Windows, Unix, or Linux, and it's moving data, it's cataloging data, it could be controlling a tape device and doing other tasks, and you just switch on deduplication. To minimize the performance of deduplication in that sort of situation, the vendors that do software-based deduplication take a larger block size to deduplicate the data than the traditional target-based appliances. So from that point of view, you get the benefits of deduplicating data, but you end up needing more disks and more bandwidth because you can't deduplic deduplicate the data as efficiently if you're taking a 64K or 128K block size as opposed to a typical 8K block size that a hardware appliance would take. So there's always a trade-off in performance versus the amount of data that you're storing. So what you tend to find is that with media server deduplication, there's a clear fit in a smaller or type of mid-market organization, maybe 10, 20 terabyte type um, organization. But as soon as you start going up to more higher capacities, you tend to find dedicated hardware appliances are where customers tend to focus their attention. Deduplication in a hardware appliance, there are pretty much every storage vendor out there has a solution. Um, you tend to find versus software, you get greater deduplication ratios. You need less bandwidth to replicate the data offsite. You've got a dedicated appliance doing the work, so you can get faster backups, faster restores than the software-based options. And it also gives you the ability as organizations to be truly heterogeneous. You could have, uh, just to use some examples, our man moving data for the, virtual, for the um, database environment. If you've got SQL, SQL can take place with the same appliance. Veeam for the virtual environment, Zerto for offsite data protection. There's a number of different ways then you can end up in a heterogeneous solution rather than with software-based deduplication end up completely homogeneous. The software has to do everything. So if you then acknowledge in, in the sort of organization that I expect consists of the multiple, uh, multitude of, of the audience here, there are only really three architectural approaches that you can deploy for disk-based backup within a deduplication appliance. So the third option I took there, which was uh, target-based appliances. Deduplication, first of all, in the backup software to straight disk, straight disk being the underlying disk technology, inline deduplication with a scale-up architecture, and the third one, which I'll talk about briefly towards the end, is a landing zone with a scale-out architecture. It is the extra good technology, that way of doing things. And I mentioned all of the big storage vendors do have deduplication products. They all take the middle option, inline deduplication with scale-out. And I do truly believe that there are some inherent... I'm going to call them disadvantages, but disadvantages may be an unfair word to use. Inherent disadvantages in that kind of solution. It does a great job of data reduction, um, doesn't do the best job of, of performing in a backup environment. But first of all, just covering backup software. What I'd like to, a message you could take away is you don't have to make a true choice between backup software deduplication and a hardware-based appliance. There is a best of both worlds approach where actually doing both makes a lot of sense. I mentioned that the deduplication um, software appliances out, sorry, software products out there can just deduplicate in a media server. What they're really doing is looking for the unique data at backup time and only sending to the underlying disk storage that data that you're storing. You're discarding all of the um, duplicate data from backup to backup. I mentioned that they, they take a larger block size, so you end up needing more storage. The best of both worlds approach is actually where you can do software deduplication in, in Veeam, as an example, send it to a disk technology such as Exagrid, and get further deduplication of the deduplicated data that was already done at the software layer. The overall deduplication ratio becomes the same as if you'd just done hardware-only deduplication, but as a result, you're sending less data over the network, so there's an infrastructure saving. 
you're saving bandwidth if you're replicating off-site because you get further data reduction. And actually, with that further data reduction you get at the hardware appliance, it's a number that changes, but it's a number that is fairly consistent in the same respect. About four to six weeks of retention on disk, and actually a deduplication appliance becomes more cost-effective than the cheapest of straight disk because that extra data reduction means that you can get the efficiencies of, the, of storage costs being saved um, in, in that kind of situation. So I mentioned that I've, I've got a, a fairly strong view that inline deduplication, it does a job, but it doesn't do the best job. And the only reason people protect their data really is for recovery purposes. So let's, for one second, assume that, as I said, deduplication is compute intensive. If you do deduplication at backup time, it will slow the backup stream down. You cannot deduplicate to straight disk, sorry, to a deduplication appliance as quickly as you can do straight disk um, with the load incurred for deduplication occurring at the most critical time as you're moving the data. Move that to one side, though. With all of those types of solutions that deduplicate in line, the second you've stored the data, you've only stored that unique data. So any time you want to get the data back, which is pretty much 80% um, of the time or greater, the most recent version organizations want to get back, you have to go through a rehydration process. Not such a big deal if it's a single file. Becomes more of a problem if it's a whole VM. If it's a whole file server or a database, it becomes even more critical. And that's where we see the challenges of deduplication affect performance, is you get the benefits of a lower disk footprint, but it comes at the cost of performance of recovery. And that's key. Um, the reason people buy the newer technologies out there for recovery is for performance, to have features that focus on performance. And this is where we see there's a disadvantage in, in the approach that um, inline deduplication has. Great job of data reduction, doesn't do a great job of performance, is the view that we have. So how do we solve that? Very simply, we have a, I'm going to call it a two-tier architecture. It's an architecture that has a front-end landing zone, all the benefits of straight disk, none of the benefits of needing to introduce the deduplication load at backup time. And then a separate retention zone, which is where the deduplicated data can be kept. So as a result of doing it this way, you land the data, we deduplicate adaptively, so we'll only deduplicate when there's resources to do so, so you get the benefits of being able to land the data. But it doesn't matter, actually, whether a customer's got one terabyte of data or 800 terabytes of data to land, we can land it in five hours or less. And I'll explain why that is a bit later. But key, really, to the positioning of why this is important is that landing zone can be used for recoveries. We always have the most recent data stored in its native format, in the backup application native format. It's not deduplicated, it's not compressed, it's native. So as a result, if you want to spin up a VM, if you want to do sure backup, if you want to do granular restore technologies, you have a full copy to be able to do it. No rehydration needs to take place. Uh, we talked about POCs. We do see bake-offs um, on a regular basis. And actually, I'd, I'd openly offer a bake-off to an organization that's looking at inline versus our approach and isn't quite sure the benefits of the landing zone. It's quite clear when you put the two products together and you see the benefits of recovering without that rehydration process having to be incurred. We also scale out. Um, it's an important function, actually. If you look at all of the storage vendors that have scale out technologies for primary storage, not one of them in this mid market has a scale out architecture for a deduplication appliance. A lot of number crunching, a lot of processing takes place in a deduplication appliance. Just adding disk doesn't work anymore. You have to have scale out in backup, particularly where deduplication is involved. And that just isn't something that's out there today. So just to reiterate, certainly when it comes to recoveries, um, you'll hear today, I'm sure, um, the importance of recovery and the importance of having the ability to um, integrity test backups without having to go through um, significant amounts of, of, of rehydration. It really is chalk and cheese in terms of taking minutes versus taking hours, depending on the volume of data that's being uh, recovered. We have case studies. <laughs> I know that the, um, the uh, interesting... Um, comment on case studies, but there are case studies that there's customers in the room today of ExtraGrid that can help uh, articulate the difference between those two types of approach. And importantly, we're talking about guarantees. Um, maybe that's something we'll talk about a little bit later, but guarantees are something you should ask every vendor for, um, some of which that we, um, we already have. It's very straightforward. We provide a network attached storage device. Um, it's a network attached storage device. It provides multiple different protocols, so you can share the device between many different data technologies. It could be uh, NFS type backups, it could be SIFs, it could be OST in a semantic environment. And I'll talk about a fourth protocol shortly, which is um, specific to Veeam. Doesn't mean to say we eliminate tape. You can use tape outside of the backup window to offsite the data, but we find most of our organizations either eliminate tape completely if the retention permits. If not, they remove tape to be way outside of the backup window, but also very infrequently used for recoveries. We have an option or a solution that works with many different data types. We do have some ecosystem partners that we focus the messaging on more specifically. Um, and we, as you see there, cover the vast array of mid-market uh, backup applications. 
two of the ecosystem partners are here today. You'll hear um, later about Zerto, where we support their off-site data recovery options. You've already heard from Veeam, and I think there's another session coming up with Veeam a bit later. And we have done some specific integration work with Veeam that is quite key to some performance characteristics in a Veeam environment. As an example, um, there's a function in, in Veeam called the Veeam Data Mover. We've brought that functionality into the deduplication appliance. So things are like all the processing for synthetic full backups happens in the appliance. The extra deduplication of the data can happen within the appliance. The ability to copy backup jobs can bypass backup server and backup proxy, the same for replication. So this is an important feature that, again, enhances the performance uh, message and also the ability to reduce the cost of storage in a data protection environment. And then lastly, in terms of technology, I'm conscious of the fact I've only got um, five minutes left, so I will leave some time for questions. If you have a situation where you introduce a scale-up architecture for data protection, and that scale-up architecture is doing deduplication, the second you install the device, you're installing a front-end controller with a fixed amount of processing power, memory, disk, and bandwidth. That fixes the backup and restore times for the lifetime of that product. Because scalability comes from adding capacity. But it's the compute, it's the front-end controller that controls how, much, how quickly you can ingest data, how quickly you can deduplicate it, and therefore how quickly you can store it. So if you take the, the numbers in the example here, you cannot deduplicate 40 terabytes of data in the same time as 20. The laws of science just don't permit that to be possible. And as you keep growing the environment, as the primary data set grows, you need more storage to store the data at the deduplication appliance. You just add disk, backup window grows, restore times grow. That's exactly the situation organizations found themselves in with tape. When they first deployed a tape library, when you first deployed a tape library years ago, it would have been perfectly acceptable for performance. But as the data grew and you couldn't change the drives or um, add more drives into the library, it, there's no real difference between that and this analogy here. Um, it's a very similar concept. With our uh, way of doing things, we truly believe scale out with a deduplication appliance is a must. Um, and that's a question to ask vendors. Um, how do you maintain performance as my data grows in, in, a, in, a, in an environment? So every time we're adding capacity, we're adding compute. By doing so, you can go from 20 to 40 to 300 to 800 terabytes of landed data. Backup and restore times can stay the same. We can also actually put different generations of product in the same grid. So we do have customers with systems six years old operating in the same grid as units sold today that have never really been were even on the roadmap six years ago. So it's a very important function to make sure technology obsolescence is avoided. Um, and that's key really to, to our success is, is to be able to scale but also maintain that performance. Um, and it really is the, the only way to scale. Um, scaling with disk isn't, isn't the way forward. And as I say, if you look at... Um, a comment that was made earlier, it is very hard to do scale out in a solution that has more than two nodes. We can put up to 25 nodes into the same grid with building blocks of landed data, 32 terabytes per block. So you can go from a situation where a single solution can go from one terabyte to 800 terabytes with a single chassis point of management. Um, and that's a very important function. So in summary, um, ExaGrid, um, I hope that first of all you've taken some questions away to ask, some, some kind of positioning points. But more importantly, I, I certainly one message to take away is if you're looking for uh, an appliance at any point in the future that has the ability to perform as well as scale, it really is the only option that is available in the market today, and that's an important factor.